So I can just step over these styling details and talk about GeoStyler, a generic styler for, for geodata. Um, interesting detail, normally I wanted to have the talk with Christian Meyer, who is unfortunately not here, but uh, it would have been interesting because at the same time there's a GeoEXT talk uh, and he is also the presenter, so somebody else is presenting there and I present that. Um, maybe better for you if the two guys on the right side would present that because they are the core developers of the software. I'm just more or less a presenter. But that's pretty cool for me because if you have any detailed technical question, don't ask me. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can come. We have a booth down there with uh, Trestris and Mondialis and one of our developers will be there after the session. So no technical questions, please. <laughs> or you can try. Okay, um, what I'm going to talk about, what was our motivation? Maybe Andrea lined it already out. He said, okay, you have to write a lot of SLD by hand. I'm going to have a look on that a little bit deeper. I present you the project, GeoStyler, talk a little bit about the architecture, the features. I have a small live demo, a very, very small live demo. hope to keep that really small in time, but the good thing is it's all online, so you can do it on your own later, and give you a short outlook what is planned next in the project. So first of all, just some words to me. Maybe just as a background, I'm founder of Terrestris. We founded Terrestris in 2002, so we acquired a lot of time um, doing web mapping stuff and writing SLD by hand. So it was really absolutely time to find something who can really ease that thing. Um, short introduction to Christian Meyer. I know him for about 10 years now. He's a geospatial software developer and architect. And yeah, that's a good thing. He's from, he, he, he opened his own company somewhere in southwest Germany. Just for you, it's closer to Bucharest than Bonn. So that's enough information on that. Um, don't want to show the geography of, bon, uh, of Germany here. Um, and if you look at what he's doing, it's very interesting because he's doing more or less the same things than we do at Terrestris. But that's a really cool thing at open source. You don't compete each other, you work together. And that's what we did in that project here. And um, yeah, that was the idea. What was our motivation? If you look out and if you heard the talk of, of Andrea already, um, there are various standards of cartographic symbolization of geodata available out there. So there are the official standards like SLD with filter encoding, or there are the industrial standards like Mapbox. So industrial standard is somewhat like people tend to say word document is a standard and in uh, in map uh, environment, somebody says it's Mapbox, something like that. But I don't want to say that Mapbox is equal to Word document. Don't forget that. Um, and you have some more project-related styling, styling like QGIS has a styler, Open Layers has styles and stuff like that. And if you look at the market, there's no universal styler. You always have to style in QGIS. What we learned, okay, you can export QGIS styles to SLD. Uh, but what if you want to convert Mapbox styles to QGIS, stuff like that? You always have to figure out a solution on that. And for us as web developers, because we do mainly we do geoportals and stuff like that, and we don't have people who use the systems who are developers, so you really actually could write SLD or open layer styles and stuff like that. So for them, we were looking for a solution how to give them a tool to really easy create styles for their maps. And so we created GeoStyler as a universal web interface. And GeoStyler in general is a ready-to-use map styling library. Its development is for about one and a half years now, nearly two years, something like that. It's open source, BSD license. It's on GitHub. I'm going to show the link later. And in the moment, it's mainly a cooperation between terrestrials and Maximum. Um, but there is already one external coder, and maybe you think it's so wonderful. After I finish my talk, you want to jump into that project. We are absolutely open to that. As 
any open source project, I think. So let's talk a little bit about the architecture we have. We have something that we call GeoStyler Core, which has a data provider, which has a styler. So we founded our own styler, our own style. I'm going to talk on that on the next slide. And we have, <coughs> in this core, we have something we call components. And these components, for instance, are UI elements, user interface elements. So you have a, a symbolizer. You can, you can choose your symbol and detect the outline of the symbol, size of the symbol, transparency, and stuff like that. Um, and we have some special features. And which is very important for us, we are independent from the format of the style. So as you can see here, we have the core, and on the right-handed side, we have a data parser that's needed to, to get knowledge about the data we want to style, and we have style parser, and they're completely independent. So in the moment, we have style parsers for SLD, for open layers. There's a more or less a rudimentary implementation for Mapbox, but you can roll your own. So if you have your own style, just create your style parser, connect it to, to GeoStyler, and then you can convert it via the internal style to your style. Makes it quite easy. So it's also independent from the framework. I'm going to show some examples later where we integrated GeoStyler in a project um, and stuff like that, and it's fully customizable. So you can use the UI elements of GeoStyler um, but you don't have to use them like they are. You can configure them. So for instance, if you have a styler for a point symbol and you can detect the outline size, outline color, and transparency, and all the stuff like that, and you don't want to have that for your users, you just can customize it. You use the UI element, and you just use the fields you want to use. That's quite easy. Just short note on this uh, internal style. So it's a little bit about inspired by SLD and Mapbox. It's a JSON-based style. And when you wonder why we do that and create our own style, it makes us much more flexible because we are not stuck to any standard or any other things. So we can do what we want internally. But you don't, as a user of GeoStyle, you don't have to learn this style. Just forget about it, have it in your back mind, and just use GeoStyler. Um, yeah, as said, read and write of various style formats is included. Um, we already can read various data, vector data formats, like WFS, GeoJSON, and Shapefile in the moment. But you can develop and integrate your own parsers for data and for style. And we have the basic support for raster data also included now. This gives you some ideas about the user interfaces, what I was talking about earlier. So we have a component which is a symbolizer editor, as you can see on the left side, um, where you can more or less define what Andrea showed in the SLD, but you can do just by click on it. Have a color picker, which is another component we integrated in that. Um, in the middle is a screenshot from a, um, from a filter editor, so you can really filter and create complex filters just by clicking on it. By the way, very interesting because in nearly 20 years, WebGIS for customers, it's always very often that customers request something like that for a UI element. And uh, it's always not easy to implement that because somebody has to use it at the end. And that's uh, sometimes Customers tend, they want to have everything, and you explain, okay, we do that and that and that, and they say, oh God, I don't understand it. And that is a more or less standardized way. And I said, you can integrate it in your application. And the good thing is you always have the code editor, so you can also, if you like to, you can go in the code editor and it is connected. Um, I can show that by a short example. Just switch over to the, um, I give you the URLs for that um, demo application here. Um, I just click on any um, example here, and as you can see here, we have the style, we have a preview of the style, and you have the, um, the code editor. And um, if I find any color like that, and you change something here, it's directly changed here, and vice versa. So if you go back here, 
and uh, change it to another color. It's changed here and it's changed over here. So that makes exit quite easy for you. Um, there is the next style. So we have some features. And that's really cool because I don't have to explain anything of that. That was explained in the, in the, in the talk before. So we have rule-based styles, including symbolizers. We have an editor for complex filters, as I told you before. We have preview. We can classifications. That's my short example. I'm going to show you live. You can insert scale ranges, scale dominators, calculation of overlapping rules, which is quite important. So if you have two rules and you put in objects into the second rule, which are already in the first one, um, the system will tell you that presumably you, you made a fault, something like that. And you can use it just by API, so you don't have to use the UI elements, but you can use the UI elements. And you can also integrate it in any other framework. Um, there are already some different layouts for the UI elements available, but you can style it. So in the end, if you create a styler from App Store and you use GeoStyler, you can just make it like it look and feel to your Map Store, and nobody will even see that it's GeoStyler on the back end. So maybe it's worth thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a developer. So uh, yeah, and it uh, has language support. In the moment, we have English, German, Spanish. Maybe we get Romanian after the conference. Would be cool. Yeah, possible fields of application. It eases your life, and it enables cartographers to style the maps and not developers to do that. So you can use it as standalone application. That's what you've seen at the, the, the short view at the demo. Um, you can integrate it in WebGIS projects. And very recently, I was really fearing at your talk that you present something like that. Uh, we created it as a GeoServer plugin, so you can, I will show you in a minute, you can use it inside GeoServer for styling GeoServer, you can use GeoStyler, which is quite cool, I think. So this is a standalone, I already showed you, and this is an integration, you see it, it looks completely different. And this is a project we are running uh, in Germany, it's about a soil information system and the customer wanted to style um, its own data. And so we integrated GeoStyler, and it looks completely different from here. So, and as said, we have a, a GeoServer extension. So if we switch over here, I just can give you another short demo how you can, can work with that. So that was quite cool. Our developer prepared, I, I wrote him a ticket, please make a demo for me. And he really prepared it step by step. Do that, do that, do that. And if I fail, I printed it out. <laughs> so I have to load some data. This is pre-configured, so I have, don't have to do anything. And um, hopefully it's loaded. And then I click on classification. And I look directly on the attributes of the data, which was magically loaded in the background. and. Uh, take an attribute, which are the names of German countries, I know, and um, maybe you not, but I as a German should know that we have 16 of them in Germany. So, and then I click on classify, and then I have my classification, which is basically the first classification I have. Nothing fancy, you can find that in QGS or any other things, but this is independent here. And um, yeah, as you can see, what we can do here, of course, we can just, just copy that to, to clipboard and um, go over, have it in, for instance, in, in GeoServer, session timed out, and um, if I go to that layer in style in, in GeoServer, which is just an orange polygon in the moment, so I can show you if I go to the, to the layer preview, I figure out that layer and open layers. So you can see that's our country in orange. And of course, 
no surprise, but when I invert the style now, here in refresh that, it's styled, cool. Uh, and really cool is that you now also can go in this style editor on GeoStyler. And in GeoStyler, you can do the same things. And you see it's absolutely the same. Like I showed you in the standalone, and I could change any color here now to whatever. I don't know. And uh, I'm not sure whether I have to press apply or not. For sure I do. And then it's styled. That's quite cool. OK, so that was more or less what I wanted to show you about GeoStyler. Of course, you want to get more UI compon components in the future, more parses for more styles. So feel engaged. Come on. Uh, and um, yeah, some more better extension assembling strategy for customizing the UIs, support for icons from fonts, which is not included yet in the moment. And uh, we had the idea to create something like a browser plugin. So you just have it on your site, can just create your style if you need it while developing or whatever, and can just get over the style. And um, yes, that's more or less about the story. So you can find the slides, I think, somewhere on the, on the conference website. Here are the links to the demo. You can play around with the demo. Um, you find the, the source code on github com terrestrius slash geostyler. There's also documentation, which really was improved before the conference. So this is very seldom, because normally you say, I developed something totally cool and crazy, but forgot the documentation. But the guys really, really did it. And as I said, all contributions are missing are, doesn't matter, are really well, welcome. So thank you. And Questions? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Till, for your presentation. I was wondering for years, the natural workflow has been, for a lot of us, from uh, creating a map in uh, QGIS, export an SLD, and uh, import that into uh, GeoServer. As we all know, there uh, have been some improvements in that uh, workflow over the past two or three years, but still that workflow isn't 100% uh, complete. There are parts missing. What makes you think <laughs> that this is uh, the solution that will reach 100% uh, of the SD uh, capabilities? I think this is a question for developers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, just to be, to be honest, I think it, it's always like open source is, is, is driven mainly by requirements you have in projects or stuff like that. Maybe you find somebody who really pays you for that, for implementing 105% SLD in that, but normally it doesn't happen. So I think it's always quite a little bit of, uh, of work left. And then it comes the next SLD standard and stuff like that. So you forget about the old stuff and head to the new stuff. So I promise never 100%. I, I, I'm, I'm realistic. <laughs> that, I really can't answer that. It's, yeah. it's just as long as it makes our customers happy, it's, it's for us it's cool. And then let's see what happens on top. If GeoSolutions jumps in, maybe we reach 100% earlier. I don't know. Hello, hi. Hi. Um, can it be used to translate uh, styles from one format to uh, another one? Let's let's say, for example, you have a style in SLD. Can you import it and? Uh, and export it and yeah. get the equivalent uh, map box style or wherever? Yes. As long as the parser is there, you can use it exactly for that. And um, you don't have to use the UI. There's an API. I know Christian did it for a customer. He transferred just by AP call, I think, 500 
um, QGIS styles to open layers or something like that. Okay, that's uh, great, thanks. There's one in, one in the back. Hi, Till. This is great work again. So, uh, so Paul, I wanted, yeah, hi. <laughs> hi. So, so we we just presented in the previous session. Maybe some of you were here. So, uh, uh, so we have 15 minutes left. I can do it again. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I sneaked in uh, while you were starting from that other session. But there we presented uh, a Python library for for GeoStyler. So, oh. so we also have a Python library now for GeoStyler. Ah, cool. cool. Yeah, good news. And uh, that one also has a command line interface to do style-to-style -style, uh, conversions, so, so that's nice. That would be. Thanks. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, you said there is an API, but is it possible? Um, you only show the demo in polygons, but does the swatches, I mean the colorful s uh, squares, shows in lines and dots when there's li has a line string yeah, yeah. and points. Yeah. Um, can it be used to just render the legend of the map, uh, just read only for, on the user front end? Uh, uh, it's, it's just for create the style, yeah. and we render the preview. Hmm. I don't know whether you can just make a screenshot or something like that, but normally, the legion is more rendered by the application who actually presents the data and not by GeoStyler. That's not what it is made for. So for instance, you have any style and you convert it to SLD, throw it into GeoServer, and then you get your legion by get legion request to GeoServer. Um, yeah, I know there is a get legend graphic request, but I sometimes want to how do I say, build a legend and apply CSS or JavaScript to modify the layouts and those sorts of stuff. And I find uh, it very useful in that use case. Uh, if you come to our booth, there's uh, Johannes, our developer. I think it's better if you talk to him directly about that. Maybe he can figure out some things for you. Okay. Thank you very much. And... Um,